watching The High Road with me, Keith Warren. Brought to you by Timber Creek Outdoors. If a hog comes in after dark tonight, we'll kill him. We're ready, and we're ready to stay here as long as it takes. So, there's some coming in right now. I can hear them eating corn. There's several of them, and they're good size too. It's pretty safe to say we got this figured out. Another big hog's coming right at us. Sure enough, we drive down, we take a look down this pipeline with the monocular, and it's loaded with pigs. There's the big one, the real big one. The wind is in our face, the air is cool, they have no idea we're here. It's about to get good. Howdy everybody, welcome to the show where today we're heading to South Texas, and our mission is to kill a bunch of hogs. Now the first stop, we're gonna meet up with an old buddy of mine. I'm Ryan Duncan and we have a, a 10,000 acre lease about 20 miles south of Alice, Texas in the brush country. Ryan and I have known each other for a long time but we've never hunted together. So we show up and Ryan says, I gotta show you these pictures. I got a big boar hog that's coming in this one feeder and it's 25 yards away and boy am I glad you brought your air gun. And um, on the Reconyx cameras, we finally patterned a big boar. He's your classic South Texas boar. Big, black, covered in mud, starting to grow teeth. A breeder, one we don't want. So the first thing we did, we got in the Jeep, we headed to the stand, and we got out just to see if there was somebody waiting for us. The north wind's blowing like crazy. We're walking right into it, hopefully gonna catch a big hog up here. Turns out nobody's there yet. We get set up, we're all ready, and we wait and wait. Tonight what we're gonna do, we're gonna stay put. The weather is actually going to be pretty nice now. I mean, I brought my little 223 rifle and it's topped off with a Pulsar Trail rifle scope. If a hog comes in after dark tonight, we'll kill him. If a hog comes in before dark tonight, we'll kill him. So we're ready and we're ready to stay here as long as it takes. So it's gonna happen. The weather's nice now. Turns out the hog didn't show up, and that's okay, because now that it's dark, we're gonna get even. Keith brought some pretty cool equipment with him, and I'm really excited to use it, so we changed tactics. We've got the thermal mounted on top of this MSR, and we're gonna take the game to them. We're gonna be safe first off, we're gonna have fun secondly. And so what we've gotta do, we've gotta uh, get together, we gotta have good communication. And so this first setup, we wanna make sure that everything is perfect as we ease in for that first engagement. We get into position, we get on the sticks. And Keith starts counting. Three, two. And that worked great, just like we planned. On to the next one. Look at this guy. Thank you. Now, we have had a rough go of it. I mean, really have. Look at the side of the head of that hog right there. She's large. Yeah, I mean, we have had a, a terrible tough time with the weather conditions. And right now, uh, the weather's slicked off and gotten perfect. Perfect to go on a, on a all night bench after these hogs. So that's what the plan is. This is the first engagement and uh, a real nice one down. So let's go ahead and get this one loaded up. And take on. Next. Absolutely. Let's go. Over the years, these hogs have adapted. So the only way to do it now is is nighttime. You know, we have to we have to adapt as they adapt. Human scent control is the number one for all trophy hunters. You know, scent control, I would say, is my number one requirement for these, uh, these trophy hog hunts. So the next engagement is absolutely to dream for. There's a huge sounder out there, and we kind of ease in, we get set up, and all of a sudden, a monster hog is coming right at us. And we get set up, and we're trying to get on it. It's like, okay, it's got to stop. We don't want to make any noise, because if we make any noise, we may spook everybody. So it's, we're hoping this hog stops. This is a monster hog. And all of a sudden, it walks off, walks off. Come on, stop, stop. 
Ah, back in the brush, we do not have a clear shot, but that's okay, because another big hog's coming right at us. I mean, it's like, okay, Ryan, you on him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you on it? Yeah, okay, we're, we don't want to just take a straight frontal shot, so we wait and wait, and as soon as it turns sideways, pow! That sucker runs off, and I mean, we know it's dead. We heard it crash, and all of a sudden we look over, it's like, there's the big one, the real big one, but it's in the brush. And we wait, 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 pow! So that was a double. Look at the size of this, though. That's a big sow. Look at the head on it. When you're out here doing this, communication is vital. You have to have good communication because, well, to the left, where? There, or there, or there. I mean, how far to the left? And so literally, it was it was tough. Good job, we gotta go pick up that other one. <laughs> We're laying them out tonight, Bubba. Woo, boom, I'm liking that. We get the first hog loaded up, and then we go retrieve the second one, and she is huge. Now that was a pretty good engagement right there. I mean, we went, uh, you know, we just started. The night is young and we wound up, we hit this pipeline and we came down and there was a big sounder down there. And then all of a sudden this guy or this girl, I should say, come out and uh, she went in the brush and all of a sudden another one came out and came right at us and we smoked it. And then all of a sudden we looked over and this one was trying to get out the back door. So we knocked it down. How big do you think she is? Well over 200. She's one of the largest sows that we've harvested this year or even years past. I mean, it's, it's a big property and I just don't see them this big. You don't shoot them during the day this big. You hardly ever see hogs during the day. And it's for that reason that thermals work so well for the hog hunter. And uh, clear areas are where we're actually scanning and killing these hogs. So it's a big old sow and we've got a lot of hours of darkness left. Let's go ahead and get out of here. I mean, that's a big one right there. Look at the dust come off of it. Yeah, good shooting. <laughs> yeah, that was teamwork there. Lucas Oil Products is proud to present Gear Care. All right, here she is, big bore air guns, and they're extremely popular nowadays. And the reason why, because they're a lot of fun to shoot, but a lot of folks say, well, how do you clean them? Well, that's a good question. Uh, what you want to do, this particular gun is the Dragon Claw. I never, ever use solvent inside the barrel. The reason why is because I don't need to. It's an air gun. But the outside needs to be cleaned just like any firearm. It's for that reason, I'm gonna use Lucas Oil CLP. Now, I wanna tell you, Lucas makes her CLP in two different containers. They've got an aerosol spray and they've also got a bottle. Now, most of the time you see me using the spray, but I love using the bottle in applications where I do not wanna have overspray all over the optics and all over the wood. But regardless, the reason why Lucas Oil CLP is because not only does it clean, lubricate, and protect, but it does it better than any other CLP on the market. At the same time, you can get away with it in your house if you want to do it in your house. The reason why? Because it has a pleasant odor. For more information on the Lucas Oil Outdoor Line, visit our website and join us on Facebook for more gear care tips. It's pretty safe to say we got this figured out. We're going to keep going. Sure enough, we drive down, we take a look down this pipeline with the monocular, and it's loaded with pigs. The wind is in our face, the air is cool, they have no idea we're here. It's about to get good. Now typically with a the thermal, I like to get in if the conditions are good up to maybe 30, 40 yards. I mean, get really, really close. But the conditions, I mean, we didn't have that much wind and the wind helps cover the sound. And so we're shooting a little bit further than what we like to shoot. So it's really testing our accuracy. We ease down there and get about 100 yards away. and We get set up. We do a countdown. And every one of the shots is a hit, but they run off. We were expecting at least one of them to hit the deck and die right there. It's like we're sitting there waiting, waiting, and all of a sudden, here comes another one from the right. Peeks out just a little bit, just enough to get a good shot at him. And this one takes it and goes right down. That's what I'm talking about right there. You know, as far as shooting goes, you know, we wound up, uh, that was a pretty good engagement right there. Close the distance down, the wind is perfect. We got within, uh, I'd say a hundred yards or so. And then the, the first three, we hit every one of them and they're off in the woods right there. I and mean, you could hear the hit, couldn't you? Oh yeah, it slammed them hard. Yeah, so anyway, and then uh, we thought it was over. And all of a sudden this guy walked out and then it was over. <laughs> I mean, honest to goodness, I didn't even know you shot. I know, one, two, three, double tap again. Yeah, that's good. Let's go get some more. 
All right, I want to talk to you about as far as equipment goes. If you're going to do this, uh, you're going to need to have some specialized equipment in order to be successful. Uh, these are accolades. They're made by Pulsar. It's a thermal binocular. Okay, and the reason why you want to have a, a handheld device is so you can you don't want to point your rifle downrange looking at cows and everything. You, what you want to do is you want to have a handheld device. The next thing that I'm going to carry with me all the time when I'm doing this is a good set of shooting sticks. Because when you're hunting like this at night, you've really got to have a good rest, because especially if you're shooting a small gun like this. But then this is the thing that you've got to have. You've got to have a thermal rifle scope. This is a Pulsar Trail. You put it on top of a real nice shooting rifle and you have a good pair of shooting sticks and uh, you're in business. But if you're not going to have good equipment, you're not going to be successful. We've had a good night. Lots of pigs, lots of kill shots. We come down the pipeline and wouldn't you know it, a big boar all by himself. Keep in mind, we never saw that big boar hog. I sent Keith by himself. I didn't want to mess this one up. At the very beginning of this hunt, we were hunting only about 200 yards away from where this hog is out there feeding right now. And this hog's coming right at me. That right there has got to be the hog that we got on Reconyx, the one that we've been trying to get. Look at the size of this guy. It's a big old boar right here. That right there is what you want, right there. I'm telling you what, we got some redemption on this guy right here. This is the hog that uh, we came out here to go after at the very beginning. Ryan sent me pictures on the cell phone. He says, man, we got a big boar coming into this one spot. You got to come out here. You got to try to take him. So we've been putting in our time. And I mean, the weather has sucked. It's been really tough, but uh, we finally got it done. And I'm going to lean back on the side. I want to show you this. I mean, he's got mud all over him. Look at that. I mean, that's Mother Nature's sunscreen right there. I mean, he's been walling. It's all dry, so no telling he probably got in it early this morning or whatever, but uh, he doesn't have really that big of teeth when you look at it. I mean, I don't think this is a real old hog, but it's a great big hog, a great big dead boar hog right down here in South Texas. How could anybody ever get tired of doing this? I mean, hunting hogs at night is like, it has taken hunting to the next level for me. Uh, the cool thing about feral hogs, you can hunt them in Texas, you can hunt them day or nighttime, okay? You can hunt them 24 seven, 365 days a year. There is no limit. They're great to eat. They're a challenge to hunt. They've got a great nose. Everything in the world makes a feral hog the perfect animal for Keith Warren to go out and enjoy hunting more. And so it's for that reason, I love hog hunting. Coming up after the break, we got a gun you've probably never seen anything like this before. It is the ultimate self-defense gun for your home. But we're gonna take it and we're gonna go on a hog hunt with it and I promise you, you're gonna be impressed. All right, let's go ahead and get this started. Ooh, oh, ho, 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 baby, that is fine. We're gonna have some fun here. Everybody likes cool guns, and this is about as cool a gun as you can have. This is a DP-12, everybody. That means a dual pump 12 gauge shotgun. It's a double barrel. And on this video, we're gonna tell you all about it. We're gonna make some fruit salad, and then we're gonna go out on a hog hunt. All right, got it loaded up with four rounds of seven and a half shot. Let's do this thing. Oh, 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 oh. What do you think about that? So we ran into the juice man a little earlier. We're fixing to run out of watermelon, so heck with it. We're gonna shoot some juice. Nice. Ooh, baby. I gotta remember to pump it. Ooh. That's nice. I love that smell. DP-12 by Standard Manufacturing. We're gonna clean this mess up, and then we're gonna go on a hog hunt. I think y'all are gonna like this one. 
All right, so we've got the new shotgun on and it's time to put it to the test. Uh, the ranch that we're hunting on, I was down here last year and uh, well, I'll tell you what, it is covered in hogs. I was able to take an air rifle and take a really nice hog and keep in mind, this place is thick brush, really, really thick brush. And so I'm back down here and I've got the DP-12 with me and I'm set up about 15 yards from a deer feeder. This spot is absolutely perfect. Got the wind coming right in our face. Of course, we wound up, we sprayed down just in case, but the spot's perfect. And this is the piece of equipment we're gonna put to work this evening right here. It's got topped off with a sight mark, red dot sight. So hopefully they'll come in before it's too dark and we can show you what this shotgun does. As the sun's starting to set, all of a sudden we have somebody show up. Matter of fact, a whole bunch of somebody show up that we weren't expecting. Ducks coming to a deer feeder. Every time we go to the stand and we're hunting hogs, the one thing that we're going to always take with us is a, is a Pulsar thermal monocular. And the reason why is because we're able to see things coming in in those low light times that you just really can't see with your naked eye. So anyway, we've got uh, some hogs coming in. There's some coming in right now. I can hear them eating corn. There's several of them. They're good size too. I hit him, I know I hit him. He went in that thick brush. The good thing is I got a flashlight on this gun. Let's go get him. All right, the gun is clear. You know, uh, this gun, we showed you earlier what it would do on different targets. And so I was really looking forward to coming out and trying it on a feral hog. And feral hogs are tough, as you can tell. Uh, if you take a look at the shot placement on this pig right here, I mean, it's a huge hole. Now the shot is not good by all means, but it's good enough to get the job done. But what surprises me and what should surprise you is how tough these animals are. Anyway, this is a real nice boar hog. Got a uh, long, pretty hair on it. Got a little bit of white on it. Uh, a perfect size eating hog. And uh, the landowners down here in South Texas really appreciate you taking them out. So uh, it wasn't as good of a kill shot as what I was hoping for for doggone sure, but it certainly got the job done. Again, this is the DP-12, okay? It is made by Standard Manufacturing, and it is a wonderful home defense weapon. If you like this video, share it with a friend, and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and post them below. Clearly, the shotgun did an exceptional job on this hog. Now, you know, I've had people ask all the time, say, would you rather have a shotgun in your home for personal protection, or would you rather have a, say, a MSR? Uh, no doubt, I'd rather have the shotgun. The reason why is because just look at the damage that it does. We just showed you. And so, uh, you know, there's no better way to go out and actually show you how it works on an animal than a feral hog. Feral hogs, as you can see from today's program, are a tremendous problem in some parts of Texas. You know, they say there's two types of property. Property that has feral hogs and property that's soon going to have feral hogs. So we did our part today and tried to eliminate as many as we could. My name is Keith Warren, and thanks for watching. Taxidermy work for the High Road Group is provided by Conroe Taxidermy, Conroe, Texas.